here with Jason, Eunice, and Delgado. That's right. And a master tin car, tin worker. Tin Smith, yes. And how long have you been doing the art and the crafts? I've actually been doing this over 30 years, and it actually surprises me to say that, but that is the truth. I've been here since Youth Market. Uh, I started doing this work by my grandmother's side when I was just old enough to sit at her bench. And uh, my grandmother was Angelina Delgado, and um, uh, just in, always had a passion for it, always enjoyed being able to share something like that with my grandmother. And, uh, and so eventually got into youth market and worked at youth market for many years. And when I became 18, as is the tradition, then I had to jury into adult market and I immediately got in. And I've been here ever since. I, I love representing the culture and the history and sharing our traditions. That's why I always demonstrate at market. I want people to be able to see just how this craft was done. The original group of artists that created uh, the Spanish Colonial Art Society their original intent was not to have a big sale on one weekend. Their original intent was to protect these arts and make sure that they could be passed down from generation to generation. Not just as a coffee table book or a picture book, but as the actual crafts that were created using traditional techniques. And it's one of the things that makes this market so beautiful and so unique is that all the artists that are juried in, they're using the original traditional techniques to create these pieces. So even though there's power tools and oils you can buy, that's not what these artists are doing. My sister does the traditional retablos, and her pigments are made from the earth. She actually had to get medium, get pigment from the earth. And so touring around New Mexico is a completely different experience for her. Because, you know, you and I see beautiful trees and scenery, and she sees ochre and red and white and gray and a beautiful green that you can only find on Lava Hada Hill over the top. And so that's kind of the way it goes. This was a gift that my grandmother made for me when I juried in as an adult in the Spanish market. So she made a little <coughs> mailbox out of tin, and she was the one that I was apprenticed to, and then it even has the Delgado family name on the flag there. So she's very talented. Now, I see that big piece over there. Yes. And it tells a story. Uh, can we explain a little bit of the story around it? Yes. So what happened with these mirrors is um, I was looking for a way for my sister to be able to express herself beyond the singular image of a saint, which is what normally you see in a retablo. And what I saw in the possibility with an octagon was the idea of eight panels that were related, but that each panel kind of told its own story, you know? So, uh, Sean. Sean, could you tell, they're interviewing us, could you tell them about this, this story mirror? Yeah. So, uh, she, she, each year we do one of these on a different subject. So we've done Noah's Ark, we've done uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, and, and things like that. And uh, so she'll be able to kind of give some background on the story behind it and everything. Yeah. So this is my sister, Sean, and uh, she was also... Oh, okay. <laughs> She was also in market since a youth. We both did youth market uh, together, and then Jury did as an adult, and she does the retalo. So we're gonna have her tell the story of this story. Yeah, thank you. So uh, my brother and I often, when when I'm uh, showing a retablo, which is a single board, uh, I can't tell a whole the whole backstory. And some of the same stories are so complicated and interesting. I want to share the whole story with people. And so we came up with a, this design together. Uh, it's an eight panel design, stop sign design. And we call it an octagon mirror or a story mirror. And that way I can tell the whole story of, it, of a Bible story or a parable or, or one of the saint stories. So in this case, this is uh, the Dolores de Maria, which is the seven sorrows of Mary. It's an image of Mother Mary with swords in her heart, and each of the swords represents the wounds of the mother. And anyone who's a parent understands the pain that a child, that you endure when your child is hurt. My son just bumped his head, and I was just in tears, listening to him cry on the phone. I wanted to be there, because we just, we feel it deeper than we even feel our own pain, or we'd rather have the pain than them. And so, and, you know, my children are not destined to to be the Messiah or anything, or, or be sacrificed so um, I can I can project that her pains are just unimaginable to watch her son 
uh, sacrificed the, the hands of others. Yeah, it's a mother's love. And so each of these panels represents an aspect or one of the swords in Mary's heart. And um, it's so great because I can uh, work with my brother on the panels and uh, explain the story to him, and then he can integrate some of the story into the tin. So on the corners, he's added uh, this. It's both a sword, which represents the wounds in her heart, and a fleur de lis, which is the three flowered, uh, three leaved flower, which represents, which is Mary's symbol. Well, I would don't put one on the bottom. The brothers of light. Uh, how do you say it in Spanish? How do you say it in Spanish? The brothers? The brothers of brother light. Yeah. Uh, uh, los hermanos de luz. So, the los hermanos de la luz. And there the author just talked about the love of Mary that really takes through with the Alabadas. So this kind of tells a story about the, the love of Mary as well. It's a question. Yeah, yeah, so for me, Mary is, is a connection to the feminine, which is about nurturing, unconditional love, and, and the pain that you suffer as a parent. So I think in all of Mary images, there's always that connection to the motherly essence of being human. <clears throat> Bring the matriarchal value out. And you don't have to be a woman. You don't have to be white or black or Hispanic or Asian. We all have a nature, a nurturing aspect to our lives, and we all have the, um, the ability to to be tender, compassionate, forgiving. So it is like the nature of, of the essence of Christianity to be more motherly. Compassion. Compassion. How do we bring that out beyond the me? Well, I, um, my job is to make art. <laughs> that um, Actually, uh, the Father just gave a beautiful uh, homily today at Mass talking about how we're doing our part by creating art and telling the stories. And whether you're Christian or not, everybody can relate to the story of a mother's suffering. And some of the same stories um, are not universal, they're very specific. But everybody understands death and um, grief and, and suffering watching a, a loved one suffer. That's a universal message. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my sister Sean does some of my postcards over there. I've got a one in. Please, both of you, have to take some of my art so you've got it. Okay, thank you. Did you get a good story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.